This Russia and Ukraine war reminds me of the Great War, World War I. But hey, have you ever wondered how World War I unfolded and why so many countries got involved in it? Yeah, definitely. World War I, often called the Great War, was a massive global conflict with around 30 countries directly engaged. The war was fought between two main alliances, the Allies and the Central Powers. Wow, it sounds like you know a lot about it. Tell me, who were the major players in these alliances? The Allies included France, the United Kingdom, and Russia until 1917. Italy joined them in 1915, and the United States came in later in 1917. Japan, Serbia, Belgium, Montenegro, and Romania, could joined in 1916, were also part of the Allies. The Central Powers consisted of Germany, Austria-Hungary, the Ottoman Empire, and Bulgaria. Got it. And what about the other countries? Were they directly involved too? Many other countries were affected due to their colonial ties, economic interests, or proximity to conflict zones. Countries like Australia, Canada, New Zealand, India, South Africa, Belgium, Portugal, Greece, Finland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, the Netherlands, China, and Brazil were all impacted in various ways. It sounds like a complex web of alliances and rivalries played a role. Can you explain more about that? Absolutely. The years leading up to World War I were marked by treaties and alliances across Europe. The Triple Alliance, formed in 1882, had Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Italy countering French influence. The Triple Entente, less formal, consisted of France, Russia, and the UK based on shared interests. But wait, how did these alliances actually contribute to the war? Well, these alliances were meant to ensure security, but they paradoxically intensified the war due to factors like the delicate balance of power entangling obligations a false sense of security, nationalism, and fear of isolation. They also created an atmosphere of suspicion and misperception, often leading to misunderstandings and conflicts. Right, so why did Russia actually leave the war? Ah, good point. Russia's departure from the war was a result of the 1917 Russian Revolution. The February Revolution led to Tsar Nicholas II's abdication and the establishment of a provisional government that continued Russia's involvement in the war. However, this government faced instability and couldn't address economic hardships and food shortages. That sounds like a tough situation. What happened next? Indeed, things escalated. The October Revolution led to the Bolsheviks, led by Vladimir Lenin seizing power. They pursued peace negotiations with the Central Powers, resulting in the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk in 1918. Russia ceded territories and exited the war, focusing on internal transformation and consolidating power. So a combination of internal factors led to Russia's exit. Absolutely. Internal factors like the revolution, social unrest, economic challenges, and the Bolsheviks' revolutionary ideals played a major role in Russia's decision to leave the war. It was a significant turning point in both Russian history and the global conflict. Thanks for clearing that up. It's fascinating how the war's impact extended beyond just the battlefield. Absolutely. The war's ripple effects were profound and shaped the course of history in many ways. If you're curious about anything else, feel free to ask. Another interesting question is why did the United States join the Allies if Russia had left? Good question. The US joined in 1917 for various reasons. Germany's unrestricted submarine warfare, economic ties with the Allies, the Zimmerman telegram proposing an alliance with Mexico against the US President Woodrow Wilson's democratic ideals, and concerns about security all played a role. Interesting. So how did individuals and families living in war zones protect themselves during the conflict? People employed various strategies like air raid precautions, building shelters, evacuating to safer regions, following blackout rules, using gas masks, stockpiling essentials, and creating emergency plans to cope with uncertain times. And speaking of individuals, how did they show support for the soldiers fighting on the front lines? Supporting the troops was vital during the war. It boosted soldiers' morale, acknowledged their sacrifices, and allowed people to contribute to the war effort through various means like volunteering, creating supplies, and fostering a sense of unity. True, the experiences of soldiers must have been tough. What about diplomatic efforts and peace talks during the war? Diplomacy and peace talks were attempted, but the entrenched positions of warring parties often led to failures. The Russian Revolution in 1917 led to a shift in dynamics and paved the way for negotiations that eventually led to the armistice in 1918 and the Treaty of Versailles in 1919, though the terms of the treaty were controversial. The aftermath of the war seems quite challenging as well. How did nations rebuild after such devastation? Absolutely, post-war reconstruction was a significant challenge. Nations faced the task of rebuilding physically, economically, 
and socially after the widespread destruction. The war's impact was far-reaching, reshaping societies, redrawing political maps, and leaving lasting scars on generations. You know, when I look at the Russia-Ukraine conflict, it somehow reminds me of the events during World War I. The way alliances and diplomatic tensions played a role back then seems to have parallels today. Absolutely. It's interesting how history seems to repeat itself in some ways. Just like the alliances back then, the current situation involves multiple countries taking sides and getting involved in the conflict. Exactly. Just like how Russia's withdrawal from World War I had a significant impact, Russia's actions and involvement in the Ukraine crisis are shaping the dynamics today. And you know, the miscommunication and misperceptions we talked about earlier, they're at play here as well. Back then, those misunderstandings among the powers led to escalation, and it seems like tensions between Russia and Ukraine are fueled by similar factors. True. And remember how the treaties and alliances in World War I created a complicated web that made diplomatic solutions challenging? Well, today's complex network of international relations and alliances is making it difficult to find a peaceful resolution in the Ukraine conflict. Of course, it's also worth considering the impact on neighboring countries. In World War I, various nations were affected due to their colonial ties or proximity to the conflict zones. Similarly, neighboring countries in Europe are facing serious implications due to the Russia-Ukraine conflict. And just like in the aftermath of World War I, the post-conflict reconstruction and rebuilding efforts are going to be a monumental task. The war-torn regions will need support to recover both economically and socially. I agree. The legacy of World One reminds us that the consequences of conflicts can extend far beyond the actual battleground. The Russia-Ukraine conflict is a stark reminder that geopolitical tensions can have ripple effects across regions and impact global stability. It's a complex situation, no doubt, but I hope that world leaders can draw lessons from history and prioritize peaceful resolutions over escalations. The aftermath of World War I taught us the importance of diplomacy and cooperation to prevent further tragedies. Let's hope so. Learning from history is crucial, especially when faced with similar challenges. Understanding the connections between past events and present-day conflicts can guide us toward a more peaceful and stable future. Absolutely. And as we discuss these parallels, it's a reminder that we all play a role in shaping the course of history. Let's hope that the lessons from both World War I and the ongoing conflicts guide us towards better decisions and a more peaceful world. Well said. It's up to our generation to strive for understanding, empathy, and international cooperation so that the mistakes of the past don't become our future. Couldn't agree more. It's been a thought-provoking conversation seeing how history's threads are woven into the events of today. Let's stay informed and engaged to make a positive impact in whatever way we can. Definitely. Here's to a more peaceful and enlightened future. Thanks for this conversation. It's been enlightening. Thank you, too. Let's continue to learn and discuss. Take care. You, too. Stay safe and take care. Until next time.